I, uh, I went out drinking this weekend and I came to the realization that I love drinking not so much for drinking, I love watching drunk people, okay? Because it's like, guys, what do you do? You go out, you get drunk, you hit on women, right? Girls, what do you do? You go out, you get drunk, you hit on women. <laughs> and it's not even sexual, ladies. I'm talking to this hottie back there and some of you in the front row. How many times has it been like one in the morning? You're on your eighth apple teeny mapolitan on the beach, whatever you drink. And you're standing there talking to some girl who's probably a stripper and you're having this conversation. Oh my God, we should totally hang out sometime. You just seem like a really cool girl, let's hang out. Cut to the next morning, you wake up, look at your phone, you're like, who the hell is Desiree? And why do I have five missed calls from her? Pull that one back when I'm sober. Speaking of dirty, trashy things, I was watching Montel Williams the other day and there was this mother on there. She was very upset because her daughter at age 15 had decided to become a stripper. And the mom's up there crying, you know, we love you. And we work so hard to give you everything. How could you do this to us, Amber Crystal? <laughs> well there, mother of the year, okay. <laughs> and I was with you till I found out you named your kid Amber Crystal, okay. Let me ask you something, when you named her this, did you think she was gonna grow up to be a geologist? <laughs> right? That is like naming your kid Tad and expecting him not to grow up to be an ass. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. It's bad planning, quite frankly. I spent a lot of time watching someone back there was named Tad. I spent a lot of time, uh, I hope there's no Amber Crystals in the audience. Watch a lot of TV and I, I'm fairly, con I, I'm convinced our country's obsessed with food, okay? We will eat anything as long as there's a cute commercial to go with it. I saw a pizza commercial the other day. Now buy any two medium one topping pizzas. Get a free order of cheesy bread and marinara dipping sauce. Let's think about this folks, okay? Cheesy bread, marinara sauce. That's pizza. <laughs> It's occurring to some of you for the first time. Mind-boggling that America's favorite side dish to pizza is more pizza <laughs> reconfigured. We do this with a lot of stuff. Pizza Hut had a commercial the other day uh, for their lasagna pizza. Has anybody seen this? In their commercial, they actually said, um, finally, all the things you love about lasagna are on a pizza. <laughs> finally. Thank God they figured out a way to get cheese and sauce from you know lasagna onto a pizza. Because before I was just eating bread, I had no idea. When I initially saw that commercial, my first thought was, oh, they're putting noodles on pizza. That should be delicious. Mm. <laughs> dentine ice, the gum with the hard candy shell. Saw a dentine ice commercial the other day. Dentine ice is coming out of its shell. Introducing new dentine ice soft chews. It's like, okay. You mean gum? <laughs> that is what that is. I'm here to tell you that, absolutely. I spent a lot of time watching TV. I spent a lot of time online. I can't stand junk mail, specifically because of the tricky ways that they get you to open your junk mail. Because sometimes it's easy to spot what is junk mail and what is not. You go in your inbox, it's like, oh, there's an Evite letter from my parents, a yoga workout letter. And then one in bold will just say like, buy Agra Mail Enhancement 42859 for you, football season, mortgage rate, 3829, chicken wing, <laughs> ice cream dinner, grass. I'm like, what? I'm not gonna open that one. Although ice cream dinner sounds delicious, it does. Uh, but they're tricky with the way they get you to open your junk mail because they use your name in the subject heading. I got one the other day, it just said, a response, Eliza, to your question. And I'm sitting there looking at it like, you know what? I did have some questions. <laughs> so glad someone took the time to get back to me and give me this, oh, virus. Well, should have seen that one coming. <laughs> price I pay, that's okay. I spent a lot of time online at work. I hate my job. I, uh, I have a boss, her name is Tammy. She's about 350 pounds, which is a lot for a woman or a elephant, I don't know. She's a, she's a handsome woman. And um, she took off her jacket the other day. No joke, it's a joke, yes, but for real. She took off her jacket the other day and I looked at the label. It's from a store called Dress Barn. This is an actual clothing store for plus size women. It's got the word barn in the title. What a horrible name. I feel like you walk in that store, you open the door, it doesn't even make a chime noise. You walk in, it's just like, <laughs> Clothe me in sheets, I've arrived. 
She's a big one. Uh, she insists that we decorate our cubicles. Cubicle culture, she likes to call it. Some of the um, men in my office that will probably never know the touch of a woman have uh, Star Wars action figures up in their cube. Everyone's got one of these in their office. Don't touch them, Eliza. Don't compromise the integrity of the packaging. <laughs> Chill out there, Wayne. Some of the lonelier women have Kathy comics pinned up in their cubes. I love Kathy. I love Kathy, cats, and chocolate. Three C's to happiness. <laughs> Tammy, at a healthy 350, has chosen to adorn her cubicle with wind chimes. She's collected them, okay? The only time these things ever make any noise is when she sits down and the negative space around her implodes. <laughs> creating this like whirlwind gust through the office. Every day at around 1.30, it's like whoosh, ding, ling, ling, ling. It's like, oh, Tammy's back from lunch. Don't turn on the AC, you mix cold air with that, we will have a tropical storm on our hands. No joke. Hurricane Tammy, tearing through the office. I'm not very good at my job. Tammy asked me to send a fax the other day. I was like, okay, no problem. So I sent the fax. She comes back in 10 minutes later. I need to know who here sent this 40 page blank fax. I had to think of a reason why I had made this mistake. I was like, um, I did because they said that they were out of paper. So I was faxing them some. Does <laughs> that not show myself out? Have security show me out? Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> People complain about their jobs. People love to complain about dating. I'm constantly hearing women, dating is hard. Dating in LA is so hard for me. I work out with makeup on, I just can't get a man. It's so hard. Yes, with that voice, it would be difficult for you to <laughs> land a hottie, I understand that. But let's not blame Los Angeles, okay? Don't blame LA or the city you live in, okay? It's not their fault, okay? Because dating is difficult anywhere you go. New York, Miami, in fact, pretty much anywhere there's a CSI series. <laughs> there's dating, it's difficult. Men and women just communicate differently. I'm bad at flirting, for example. I never know, are you flirting with me? Are you making fun of me? Should I laugh, should I cry, should I be offended? Should I kiss you, should I hit you in the mouth? I don't know. <laughs> talking to this guy the other day. He was like, hey, Eliza, check it out. If I could be any animal, you know what I'd be? I was like, what, Tad? What would you be? It's like, check it out. I'd be a cougar. Because they're sleek, strong, and when they see their prey, they lock in on it and they just pounce. I was like, okay. What you've just described to me sounds like a metaphor for a rapist. <laughs> Appreciate the effort, though. You ever date someone smaller than you? I'm really talking to the ladies. Guys, I hope you have, unless you have like an Amazon fetish. I, uh... <laughs> I dated a guy once who's about this tall, kind of a tiny guy. We were making out one night and I thought it'd be great to spice things up. So I leaned down, I whispered in his ear. I was like, baby, tell me what you want. And his answer was, I want you to get off of me. <laughs> it felt good. We were sleeping later that night. I heard a noise at the door. I was like, baby, wake up. Wake up, there's something at the door. At the door, go look. He turned around, looked at me point blank and just went, I can't protect you. Give Big Mama the bat, I'll go take care of it. You stay here, make yourself look pretty. This guy I had a huge crush on actually called me the other day. He's like, hey, Liz, what's up? You wanna go out Friday? What are you doing? I was like, nothing, I'm just working out naked. Something. It's like, cool, let's go out Friday. I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. What do you wanna do? So like, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> it involves pillows and blankets. So of course I'm sitting there thinking, you know, oh my God, we're gonna build a fort. <laughs> my name is Eliza Schlesinger. Thank you very much.